I am so looking forward to this coming Lord's Day. It will be the day that we reassemble, gather together, that we meet in covenant commitment to worship the wonder of our God. It will be the first time in 16 weeks that we will be able to, as a body of believers, to corporately share in each other's lives, collectively encourage one another, challenging each of us as our dear church family to be changed as Christ-like disciples into the character of God's Son. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, we read, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. I've so missed our times together. I've missed the family fellowship that we have in Christ. But just to be clear, the church, our church, Calvary Baptist Church, has never been closed. So it does not need to reopen. We will reassemble. We will not reopen. We, for 16 weeks, simply stopped worshiping in our buildings. We did that in order to protect the health and well-being of our people and our communities. The church, our church, Calvary Baptist Church, does not require a building in order to be the church. What is required is love, compassion, and the presence of God in our lives. I'm so thankful, so very thankful, that those qualities have always been part of our dear church family. I want to take this Wednesday words and thank you for your investment in the lives of people over the last 16 weeks. I want to thank you for calling and checking on folks. I want to thank you for being willing to meet the needs of many who could not meet their own needs. I want to thank you for expressing your love for others and your love for our Lord in so many, so many ways. I want to thank you for using your gifts, your abilities, and investing your energies for the cause of Christ. Thank you. I also want to challenge you. Challenge you to continue to be the church. Continue to live out the love of God for those around you. Continue to reach out to others and share the gospel, the good news, the hope that we all need during these difficult and trying times. I want to challenge you to look for new ways to impact your world as we recognize how lost and lonely those around us really are. Let me encourage you to discover opportunities that only you have to plant the seed of the Word of God and the love of God. Do not think that just because we are regathering, reassembling together, our task is complete. Now, more than ever, we all need to be the people of God, the church of the living God, the foundation of truth in a world that has so desperately lost its way. I hope that you have marked your calendars for this Sunday, July 5. We are planning on two services, one at 9.15 and one at 11 o'clock. This is so we can practice physical distancing and carefully protect our dear church family. If you have not determined which service you plan to attend, please do so and let us know. Also, please let us know how many of your family will be attending. We want to do everything we can to be ready, ready to encourage you as we gather together. Now, things certainly will be different, but that's okay. I hope that you are different different because of the work of God, what he has done in your lives in the past four months, different because God has used you to be his church in ways that you never imagined or even thought possible, different because you are more committed, more intentional, more excited about reaching our world, your world, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Things will be different. But isn't that what our Christian life is all about? Being challenged, being changed, 
being committed as Christ-like disciples to live out the character of Christ. I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to worship with you. But I am most anxious to hear about what God has done, how God has worked, what you have discovered as you have lived out Christ's love, his compassion, and his presence in your life. Our God is good all the time. And all the time, our God is good. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your faithfulness, your work of mercy and grace and love in our lives. We thank you, Father, for challenges that you bring because they're designed to change us and help us to be more determined to be Christ-like disciples and more aware of the character of your Son, who is our Savior. Father, we pray that as we look forward to meeting together this Lord's Day, that you would just work out all of the details, that you would work in our hearts, that you'd even protect us as we meet together, that you'd work in our lives, that you'd give us a hunger for your word and a love for your people and for those around us. We pray, Father, for those that aren't comfortable about regathering yet. Pray that you'd bless them and encourage them. And we pray, Father, that you would just help us to recognize how we can consider others and how we can fulfill the law of Christ to love one another. We love you, Father. And Father, we thank you that nothing, nothing at all in our lives, in our culture, will ever separate us from your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you.